Skills Pays Bills Boxing back with another video and this time I'm looking at the potential dance partners for Dillian White on November 21st if indeed Dillian is to fight on that date. But look guys, I just want to address the elephant in the room here. I think it's a rather strange set of circumstances. Not the not the, the situation with Povetkin himself, but the whole aftermath of Dillian's fight with Povetkin was he wants to avenge the defeat. It was a moment of, of genius or a bit of luck. However people want to spin it. And Dillian White wants to rematch ASAP. Then the other side line of thought and the other stuff that was coming with it was Povetkin should go on to fight Fury now for the WBC. It should be that he takes White's place. But he's, he can't because as Hearn said he's contracted. He has to have the rematch with Dillian. Now all of a sudden, Povetkin contracts the illness that everyone knows about. The fight's been pushed back. It's not cancelled, it's postponed. Yet, now, it's almost as if Hearn and White are dusting themselves off from Povetkin and they're distancing themselves. Almost as if that's it. You know, yes, that's the date, Jan January 30th, but we'll, what we want to fight someone else, we'll have Fury. And they're trying to jump back again to the top of the food chain and it's it's a rather strange set of circumstances because now Hearn's gone out online and started talking about fighting other fighters you know uh, for White to fight other fighters on the November the 21st date calling out Andy Ruiz who I'll look into in a moment it's just a rather set of strange circumstances guys and something that um, makes me think that I don't think we're going to see the rematch with Povetkin personally I've got a feeling that they're looking to move on from him I think this is their best chance to do that and it seems that way that they're going to move on. Anyways, let's move on to the candidates. So, number one for me would be Michael Hunter. High risk, low reward. I know what people are going to say. And to be honest, this is the reason why I don't see the fight happening. I'd be very, very surprised if Dillian White takes on Michael Hunter on November 21st. Why? Because he's a real life boogeyman. This guy is the epitome of high risk, low reward. He's not a big name, he's not a big puncher, but he's got good skills, good engine, and he can punch, and he's got a wealth of amateur and world-class experience against super heavyweights in the amateur amateur code, as well as fighting as a cruiserweight against the best in Alexander Usyk, and performing very well in that WBO title fight a number of years ago, winning some rounds, performing well, and then moving to heavyweight where he has stopped bigger men six foot six six foot seven men he stopped them he's ground them down and beat them and then last year in december in jeddah i personally thought he beat povetkin hurt him several times and i felt he won the fight relatively convincingly on points yes the middle rounds there was a few rounds where i think he tired a little bit because he, of the early onslaught but i think he recovered the, the rounds later on to, to go on and win that fight but he didn't get the decision, but I think he's shown himself as a true world-class operator. And at this short notice, I think he's the guy that they should be looking at for a pay-per-view contest because he's ready to go. He's always in good shape. But again, high risk, low reward. So I'm doubtful. But then, oddly enough, looking at, you know, I'm hearing the name Martin Bacoli. And that Bacoli could be the guy to step in. Why? Well, he's a matchroom fighter. Billy Nelson is, is essentially his mouthpiece. Billy is pushing and has been for years. This guy is the goods. But the sparring, the sparring, the sparring. We hear of the spars with Joyce and, and Joshua and how good he's done and that he can punch and that he's well skilled. And he was moving along nicely until we met Hunter on that memorable night at York Hall Bethnal Green where it all fell apart and for several rounds he was asking to be pulled out and then Billy wouldn't pull him out, and then the fight did get stopped. It was a terrible, terrible night, and it's set him back many years. It's set him back quite a, lot, quite a while, and it's definitely still in the minds of fans, but he has gone on, and he has won some fights, and he did go to Poland and defeat Marius Fack in his backyard. Is that enough for him to get a pay-per-view contest against Dillian White at such short notice? I don't know. Again, the high risk, low reward factor factors into it. Being a big man, he can punch. Apparently, he's got good, decent hand speed and he's well versed and well skilled. I'm unsure about this one. It might be the more realistic one, uh, given such short notice and being a matchroom fighter. Who really knows? I mean, 
for Dillian White, is it really a worthwhile fight? Is it going to move him in the right direction? It'll blow off the cobwebs and, and get rid of all those demons maybe from the Povetkin fight. But for me, I'm not too sure, not sold that this is the fight that needs to happen or will happen. And last but not least, Andy Ruiz. This is one that Eddie Hearn chucked out there. I think that sort of shows the desperation of the situation right now. It's a good move for White if it can happen and he can win. I just don't see it happening. I think the unified former heavyweight champion of the world, Andy Ruiz, will not take this fight at such short notice. I just don't think there's anything for him in it. Bar a big pot of cash and with no fans, etc. I'm not sure this will be the most viable option. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you.